Namo Narayan Swamiji. Namo Narayan to all the participants of the second session of Satyam Yoga Conclave. This is our eighth edition. We have been having good conversations about several topics. And this month's topic, as we all know, uh, for the last one month, we have been practicing about yoga and ecology. And uh, we have uh, practiced several practices and we have also done a conversation with Swamiji. So all SSYRF participants are eager to hear from Dr. Yogita Shukla, uh, today's speaker. And uh, I am very, very excited to introduce Dr. Yogita Shukla today to the uh, forum today here. In fact, uh, I'm so excited that uh, I'm in the same forum as she is in. Uh, she is an interdisciplinary professional with core passion towards scientific research, uh, which is my passion also. So uh, I have a special affinity towards this whole uh, session, Dr. Yogita, and I'm so very excited to hear from you. Uh, so uh, Dr. Yogita is... Uh, uh, very passionate about scientific research, geospatial technology, and sustainable living with diverse experience of over 25 years in environment, as well as geospatial information science, focusing on climate, climate change, natural resource management, energy management, rural and urban development, and now working towards building sustainable systems with holistic focus and linking diverse disciplines as science, science brainer. Actually, this word also uh, gives me a lot of excitement. Uh, this is a very nice uh, uh, word that you have coined, science printer. Uh, Dr. Yogita, welcome to the forum. And we are all eager to hear from you and ask so many questions. Uh, I'm sure all the listeners, all the SSYRF participants are also waiting to hear from you about ecology. And we have been uh, listening to Swamiji's, uh, uh, Swamiji's uh, speeches and uh, uh, discourses about ecology all through the month. So uh, some of us will uh, try to connect your field with spirituality. So, you know, adding another dimension if you have not already added it uh, to the sustainable living. So welcome, Dr. Yogita, and we are all eager to listen to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Swamiji, for uh, giving this opportunity to be able to uh, present uh, in this forum. And uh, uh, I shared with Swamiji also, and I'll share with you all also. So somehow, uh, my journey as a spiritual seeker and as a scientific researcher is intertwined with each other and um, as i said that i followed my intuition and rest everything led one thing led to another thing so i closely connect with nature i closely connect with the environment and that's how i pursued my masters in environmental sciences and then one thing led to another and i did my phd in uh, space sciences that is remote sensing so today's topic, we'll be talking about ecosystems, biodiversity, and climate. And in between, I would also give the contextual things of, because I'm, my understanding of yoga is not much. It's just uh, I'm a spiritual seeker. So as a layman, how much understanding I have of yoga is that. But yes, about ecology, environment, biodiversity, and climate, uh, I have a fair understanding uh, which I could uh, gather in the last 20, 25 years. So in, in this today's session, we'll be understanding what ecosystems are, what biodiversity is, what's the meaning of sustainability and the current phenomena of climate change and environmental disasters, how we uh, came to these points and now what are the steps for ecological rehabilitation and regeneration. So understanding ecosystems and biodiversity. But before in understanding an ecosystems uh, and biodiversity, I would want to start with the environment. So uh, environment, uh, it's, it's not just the external condition resources or stim stimuli, but it is also the internal environmentally, uh, especially of the multicellular organisms. So environment is both inside and outside. And this is again, the basic tenets of yoga is the way Swamiji ne bataya tha, like he told that uh, yatha pinde tatha 
I'm sorry. Brahmande. 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 So, so what's within us is outside us. So environment also comprises of the external environment and the internal environment. And uh, we are the components of environment. So natural uh, components of environment are air, water, land, living things. Uh, then we humans, we have actually impacted the environment to an extent that we have created an alternative ecosystems, which we now call as man-made ecosystems with buildings, parks, bridges, roads, monuments, industries. And that's an, that's an alternate environment and ecosystem which we have created. And then we have what is called as the social environment, which is like individual, family, community, religion, education, political, economics. So all this comprises environment and the natural part of it uh, is what we call as the ecosystems. And it is the interaction and the in interplay between the various components that we undergo the changes what we are witnessing now because the human, if we see in this components of environment, the human, the social and the human man-made has largely impacted the natural environment. So as I said, it is the environment is an interlinked phenomena between the physical realm, the biological realm, the social realm of us humans, our cultural, industrial, and economic. And that is how um, I see in yoga also, all the practices of yoga, uh, we just don't talk about uh, the individual well-being, but we also talk about an overall well-being of uh, uh, our universe, our uh, society, and uh, how each of us are impacted. And it is an uh, interaction between various spheres. So what are these various spheres? The atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the anthrosphere, the lithosphere, the biosphere, and the cryosphere. So we humans are only a minuscule part of this whole connected ecosystem ecology or the earth systems, what I call as uh, the biosphere. Rest are all the processes of cryosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere, anthrosphere, lithosphere. It is what it makes our environment. It is a multi-sphere interaction which makes our earth. So our earth is a living planet. And as you see that this interaction is not a one-way interaction. All the interaction between all these spheres is a two-way interaction. And you see there's a harmony. Sorry to interaction. interrupt you, Dr. Yogita. Would you be yeah. explaining what each sphere is in the later slides? Or if you are yeah. trying to go, go through like this, then we would need a little introduction about each sphere. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, I'll just so atmosphere, as we say, uh, uh, is the uh, air, the air part of uh, uh, us, which comprises of all the gases, which uh, forms the atmosphere, and then the atmosphere is uh, like three layers: the troposphere, the stratosphere, and then the ionosphere and the exosphere. So, so that is one. Then the hydrosphere is the water part of it. मतलब इसको अगर योगा से देखें तो हम पंच जो फाइव एलिमेंट्स हैं हमारे वो फाइव एलिमेंट्स आते हैं और दो एलिमेंट्स अलग से भी हैं इसमें तो एटमॉस्फेयर हाइड्रोस्फेयर लिथोस्फेयर इज द अर्थ इसमें अग्नि का जो है वो नहीं है जब हम क्योंकि जो फायर है वो उस तरह से नेचर में एक स्फेयर नहीं बनाती है वो इंटरक्शन से बनती है इंटरक्शन ऑफ द नेचुरल थिंग द फायर एलिमेंट कम्स इन टू पिक्चर द एंथ्रोस्फेयर इज द ह्यूमन स्फेयर विच वी हैव क्रिएटेड द अल्टरनेटिव सिस्टम द क्रायोस्फेयर इज द आइस बिकॉज अ लार्ज मास ऑफ अर्थ सर्फेस इज कवर्ड बाय आइस एंड इट हैज इट्स इंटरक्शन विद द स्पेस एंड बायोस्फेयर इज द बायोलॉजिकल ऑर्गेनिजम्स 
and lithosphere is our uh, land, the soil, and all, all that sphere. So each uh, sphere has its own components, both the biological components and the abiological. Mostly these are, uh, other than biosphere, these are all the physical components. Anthrosphere, it includes the physical and the biological components and the uh, man-made components. So the major interactions happens between the biosphere, the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the lithosphere, and also the pedosphere. So pedosphere is what we call as the soil. You know, the soil health, uh, which, 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 uh, which, which con constitutes of microorganisms, uh, which constitutes of uh, earthworms. And it also has, like, it also uh, has an exchange with the other spheres like the atmosphere, like the hydrosphere. So these are all basically very connected. What I've, I'm trying to uh, give the message through all these things is that these all systems are all very connected and this environment is not a siloed thing. Uh, it is a very connected system. Uh, and each one of uh, these are connected in a way that the exchange is in a balance. It is in a harmony. Similarly, this, uh, this is again an interaction between the atmosphere, the biosphere, the lithosphere, the hydrosphere, and the pedosphere. So all these processes like photosynthesis uh, from uh, the atmosphere to the hydrosphere, it uh, connects the biosphere and also the, the pedosphere is also the part of that uh, photosynthetic uh, exchange the sedimentation again, it is the exchange between the hydrosphere and the lithosphere. Uh, then we have uh, the bioturbation, which is the interaction between the lithosphere and the biosphere, whether there's a nutrient cycling is happening, whether the transformation is happening between the, the living, uh, the, the organic and the inorganic components. So what I'm trying to uh, get through this is that these are the spheres which connect, which, uh, you know, brings us all together. And for example, this cryosphere, it is regulating the climate, the runoff, the water conservation, the water purification. It is providing fresh water, clean energy, and it is supporting the infrastructure and engineering and habitation and culturally it is supporting the recreational, the scientific research and the education part of it and the religious and the cultural part of it. So we as an anthrosphere have had a very profound impact on the other spheres of our earth systems. That is because we try to derive profit out of whatever we are doing. And this thing of deriving profit out of our earth systems, where we are changing the land use, where we are changing the, uh, uh, the transformations, uh, where we are changing the ecological cycles and we are impacting the uh, all the spheres, it's driven out of our, you know, uh, cumulative aspirations for accumulation and profit. And this is this impact what we today are witnessing as climate change, uh, extreme events, because the earth systems, the universe, it's talk about harmony and balance. So you, you can only take as much as the earth can regenerate, as much as the earth can uh, produce and and as a, as we go uh, uh, deeper into this understanding of this processes like you know so so how each one of this is impacting uh, you are seeing so there there, there is this uh, if, if there is a change in uh, ice there would be a change in the uh, hydrosphere there would be change in the atmosphere also because the, the the clouds formation and all those would also be impacted. And uh, the cloud formation will be impacted, then it will again have an impact on the precipitation. So 
this is how the, I think this picture shows everything uh, that how the changes in atmospheric composition impacts the changes in the ocean shape, salinity, sea temperature, uh, how the changes in land, elevation, vegetation, albedo, it changes the heat exchange, uh, the wind patterns, the radiation, the insulation, the outgoing uh, radiations. So then when we come to ecosystems, so this was like environment. We were a larger part of it. And in this environment, we have a community, the community which is made up of two components which interact with each other in a given uh, biosphere, in a given uh, uh, in interactive uh, system where biosphere, lithosphere, hydrosphere, they're all interacting. Uh, in that ecosystem. So each ecosystem, the, the interaction between all these spheres is pretty uh, different. So what, 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 whatever ecological uh, interaction happen is in deserts is different from whatever ecological interaction will happen in a tropical rainforest or whatever e ecosystem interactions which are happening in a mountainous region would be very different from what it is happening in the uh, plain areas. So uh, the, the two basic components are the uh, biotope and biosynosis. So biotope are the physical components like your climate, temperature, nutrients, your uh, all the other spheres like lithosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere, all those form the abiotic component and the biotic component is the biosphere. So if you see that this is how the interaction, this is just uh, how the carbon moves uh, in an ecosystem uh, and uh, because a lot of emphasis on carbon, but it's not just carbon, all the other uh, gases, all the other minerals and nutrients also move in an ecosystem like this. So photosynthesis is what it captures the CO2. Uh, plants uh, capture photosynthesis and convert it into energy, which is stored as food and which is given as a uh, energy to all the other li living organisms. So on, on, in this planet, the only producers are plants and blue-green algae. Rest, all the components are consumers. So we all are the consumers of the resources of the planet. We are not the producers. The only producers on this planet are plants and alga. So this is what we have to understand at a very basic level that the earth economy. So this exchange is basically what it entails, the economics of the earth systems. And the human economic system needs to align with this earth's economic system. So uh, what are the different types of ecosystems? So we have like the first uh, categorization is whether it is a land-based ecosystem or whether it is a water-based ecosystem. So we call land-based as terrestrial ecosystems and water-based as uh, uh, aquatic ecosystems. And in aquatic ecosystems also, we have two diverse ecosystems. One is freshwater, another is marine. So marine is what we call, call the sea and freshwater is all the our rivers, ponds, lakes, all these uh, are the freshwater. Uh, marine is different from freshwater in terms of the salinity because the salinity of uh, oceans is very high and it has its own uh, importance as uh, the, the salinity of oceans has its own importance because it is regulating the energy interactions at a very uh, different dimension. So uh, the marine environment is altogether very different. And then we have the freshwater in that we have lentic, lotic and wetlands. So lotic is basically your running water and lentic is something like uh, a reservoir. And then wetlands are in between. You have a uh, lot of uh, biodiversity and a lot of uh, uh, other uh, landforms also. Then we come to terrestrial. So terrestrial, we have forest, we have desert, we have grassland and we have tundra. So forest, we all know. It's trees, a lot of vegetation. Desert is uh, not much vegetation. Uh, and whatever vegetation is, it is very uh, typical of the desert. Then grasslands is like uh, vast expanses of huge grasslands. And tundra is basically the ice uh, ecosystems. 
and in forest also based on the climatic regimes we have temperate we have taiga and we have top tropical so from equator to a certain uh, latitudes we have tropical then uh, from uh, and then there would be one more subtropical also then uh, as we move north towards the latitude uh, we and even in the southern part also as we move away from the equator with tropical subtropical temperate and taiga so uh, in ecosystems as i said that the producers are the plants and this is how the energy transfer happens from one trophic level to another trophic level so uh, i am a vegetarian uh, that's because of my cultural background uh, the the kind of uh, family i was born in but now i say i am a conscious vegetarian because of my understanding of ecology and ecosystems so when we understand the ecology and ecosystems we realize where at the trophic level we should be where our consumption is not a burden on the planet and it is also healthy for our uh, body so as you see the energy as it moves from one trophic level to another trophic level it reduces so if we say the primary producer they uh, fix say 10000 kilo calories per meter square per year as it moves from those primary producers to the primary consumers 10% reduction happens in that energy so you get 1000 kilo calories per meter square per year of that energy and as we get to the secondary consumer you only get 100 kilo calories and as you move to the tertiary consumers you get only 10 kilo calories and that is why uh, we uh, the the mass the biomass increases as uh, the consumption at the next level goes so uh, and and this uh, he energy you know it is lost to, to environment because the heat is produced by cellular respiration which is a necessary function for life then once these uh, producers heterotrophs consumers and all those things once uh, they die then they are decomposed by the decomposers who are called the detritivores so they basically thrive on dead matter which is coming from the other trophic level and as i said that this is the bath pyramid of biomass so uh, 1000 kg of producers is required to support 1 kg of top carnivore so that is how and and in case of aquatic system the biomass pyramid is inverted so the carnivore uh, is much huge the biomass is much huge whereas the producer the biomass is less and how the energy exchange happens so as i said that the sunlight which comes uh, it uh, fixes the co2 through photosynthesis we get the oxygen and the sugars which are being uh, derived as a by product of the photosynthesis they are very high quality energy and this ex oxygen is provided to the uh, consumers and the decomposers which then uh, through respiration again release co2 water and low quality energy as heat and these ecosystems they provide us with the services so uh, the the basic services like our uh, fiber genetic resources water uh, food uh, energy biomass uh, it it also provides us with the cultural services like we go to nature for recreation we feel happy being in nature and uh, and again there's a reason for that you know because the natural forest they release a uh, a chemical called phytoncide which is a huge mood buster and then they also provide what we call as regulating services which regulate 
the water, soil, and air quality in coastal areas, for example, mangroves, they provide the protection against the cyclones or, and, and the hurricanes. Uh, soil, uh, it enhances the soil fertility. Like the, if, if, if we have a more biodiverse ecosystem, the kind of manure which is generated after decomposition of the litter, it will provide a lot of macro and micronutrients to the soil. So the fertility of soil is much enhanced. And then uh, having a lot of uh, biodiversity, uh, uh, a lot of carbon sequestration also happens. It also reduces soil erosion. Uh, bees, they provide the pollination. So we get a continual uh, availability of various fruits and flowers and uh, other products like honey, then uh, the, the root systems, you know, they basically provide the storage to the water. Uh, uh, and then, uh, as I said, we, uh, the, the plants releases certain chemicals which provides uh, uh, anti, uh, well, they are like against the pests. So all these services are what the, these ecosystems provide. So now we come to the types of biodiversity. So the biodiversity is uh, like, it's a, it's a genetic diversity, it's a species diversity, it's ecosystem diversity, and it's a functional diversity. So genetic diversity is like between the so there's a species, but in, in, in that species, there are different varieties, you know. Uh, so that is where you get the diversity at the genetic level. Uh, we have different types of uh, pulses or we have different types of uh, grains. So that is the genetic diversity. Then we come to species diversity. We have a lot of species, uh, genus. We have a lot of order, family. And then, uh, as I said, as we uh, earlier studied that there are different kind of ecosystems, there are forest ecosystems, there are desert ecosystems, there are uh, grasslands, uh, there are aquatic ecosystems. So that is the ecosystem diversity. And then we have the functional diversity, which is like uh, uh, different uh, components of the ecosystems have different functionalities. For example, trees, they uh, fixes the uh, carbon dioxide and, 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 and provide us with the uh, energy and the matter, the decomposers, they provide us the, they release all the matter which is accumulated and again, you know, provide the macronutrients and the micronutrients. So, uh, again, as I said, that different kind of diversity. So, uh, in, in an uh, space, we have a mountain also, we have forest also, we have parkland, we have grasslands. And then how the biodiversity is also connected to ecosystem. So each of the ecosystems has a unique biodiverse arrangement. So the, uh, the animals, the plants, the soil type, the hydrology of a temperate forest would be different from what is a taiga forest, would be different from what we have in the grasslands or in a freshwater or in a coral reef or in a desert or in a savanna or in a tropical rainforest or in a marine environment or in a tundra uh, setup. So, uh, so for example, uh, desert, even in different type of deserts, the diversity is very large. The diversity in Thar Desert of India is quite different from the diversity in the Middle East and also the Sahara Desert. The species in Thar Desert are very different from the species which are there in the Sahara Desert or which are there in the Middle East Desert. And what we have been trying to do, so there was this uh, example which uh, uh, we borrowed a uh, like few species from the Israel and you know, uh, borrowed it uh, for uh, afforestation in uh, desert regions of Rajasthan. So that's called Prosopis juliflora, and that's called Israeli babul also, or Vilayati babul. You know, that kind of introduction created a lot of havoc 
to the original biodiversity and ecosystem of the Thar Desert. And it was only after say 25 to 30 years we realized that we made a mistake. And now we are trying to rectify that mistake, you know, because the, the Prosopis julie flora, which is very exotic species, though it is a desert plant, though it grows very well in the desert environment, but it grew in the environment of the Israel and it is not suitable for the environment which is there in the Thar Desert. So whenever we do a kind of a plantation, so right now we say, okay, we have to save our and we have to do the plantations and all those things. We just can't do the plantation just like that. Because it took 3.5 billion years for this earth to evolve into a climate stable climate where it identified which plant which animal, which species is to be grown where? And we, just with our small intelligence of few thousand years, or few lakh years, you know, we are challenging the intelligence of 3.5 billion years. So, so I think I, would have, I was able to give you a perspective of about environment, ecology, how these systems are interacting with each other and how they are, we are a networked uh, system. We are not a silo. We are not an independent. We are a part of this whole. So I gave you a picture of this whole. And now we come to what we, this is a buzzword these days, sustainability. So what is sustainability? And also, Dr. Yogita, <laughs> looks like man has no place in this whole thing. Yes, man has no place. Man, man, man has place as much as we abide by the uh, the mechanisms of uh, and the guidance of those earth systems you know so we do have otherwise earth like we would not have evolved on this planet so we do have that place but we have our boundaries we have our uh, limitations uh, limitations which uh, which which is both the physical limitation and also the ecological limitations which we uh, surpassed which we uh, what you can say which we um, overruled ha this this would take oh lakshman rekha so yeah. we have this, that lakshman rekha is for us and we went out of that lakshman rekha so once you go out of lakshman rekha like uh, all these uh, stories you know they are basically trying to make us understand that you know going out of lakshman rekha how devastating it can be to a uh, to, to a larger and how it can impact the larger uh, being also. Means we coming out of our Lakshman Rekha is not impacting us. It is impacting the plants. It is impacting the other animals, you know. So, so we are in a period of a mass extinction, you know. So it's, it's our activities, you know, which have led to this uh, thing of a mass extinction of other animals, which they don't have any uh, say or they don't have any contribution also uh, in this phenomenon, in this process. So, so as I said, the sustainability is basically a balance between the biosphere and the geosphere. So interaction between the living system and the non-living system. Because these are the two main components of ecosystems. So what we have to understand that this also has its own consciousness. The consciousness which we talk about, a human consciousness, but our earth has its own consciousness and it is the interaction between the two consciousness of the biosphere and the geosphere which drives life and life systems on this planet. And it is this balance. So we, what we have done is we have Try, we have disrupted this balance and that is why what we are facing is today is the repercussion of that balance. The imbalance. So as I said, the solar energy is the driving force which drives the energy of all the systems in this earth uh, and the interaction between the geosphere and the biosphere, the energy exchange between the geosphere and the biosphere is what keeps us the 
earth systems and the ecosystems functioning in a harmonious and a rhythmic way. So this is how the biosphere, the atmosphere, the lithosphere and the hydrosphere, they are connected and they work in tandem with each other. So as I said that we all have a budget. So this is the energy budget for our earth. And if you are able to understand through this figure, whatever energy is coming, it has to go back. So, so if we say that incoming solar energy is 100%, 6% is reflected by atmosphere, 20% is reflected by clouds, 4% is reflected from the Earth's surface. 16% is absorbed by atmosphere, 3% is absorbed by clouds, and 51% is absorbed by land and oceans. And then after absorption, then what it is done, it is re-emitted as heat. So this 64% and 66% is basically re-emitted as heat to the exosphere. Now, what has happened that the transformation which we have done in the biological cycles, in the geological cycles, what we have done is we have, we are not allowing this energy to go back to the space. And because of that, we are experiencing what we can say global warming because the energy is being trapped, the energy which is supposed to, is to move out. It's a zero-sum game. We can't accumulate energy and matter. Mm -hmm. So this is how now it is sent back as a, if you see here, so this is the, the imbalance, which are, because it is back radiation, which is like 340 fluxin, uh, what's per meter square. So how did we arrive to this situation? So like Earth's prebiotic atmosphere, it was a reducing atmosphere, you know, a lot of nitrogen, CO2 and hydrogen was there. And then uh, the, the water uh, came into the oceans and the first uh, blue green alga or the cyanobacteria, the first life. So it, it was a very good environment to initiate life. Once the life was initiated, then it was the modern atmosphere, which is an oxidizing atmosphere, is for the thriving of the entire planet. And if we want this to continue, so today's Earth environment is an oxidizing environment. It is not a reducing environment. It is, it is uh, having a lot of oxygen compared to what it had in the prebiotic atmosphere and it is this oxygen which is the living force which is the driving force of all the life on this planet so as i said that we have been in a stable state for almost 4 billion years and this thermostate is driven by the interplay between plate tectonics, CO2, and oceans. So that's why we are talking about, you know, carbon emissions, carbon uh, reduction and all that, because that balance is maintained by the carbon cycle. So this is how it happens. So vulc volcanoes, they emit CO2 into the atmosphere, which keeps Earth via the greenhouse gas effects. And this warming helps seawater to evaporate and form rains. This rain contains that carbon dioxide and it is, it, it, it is slightly acidic. So it dissolves minerals from the rocks into the water. And then this dissolved carbon containing minerals is washed into rivers and into the sea. This then precipitate to form carbon containing rocks. They also 
uh, subduct and CO2 is re uh, released and then CO2 is also re released to the volcano. So this is how the entire cycle, if you see, this is how 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's, it's a cyclic process. And this cyclic process has resulted in what we have, what we call as Earth's thermostate. The other thing which has maintained the Earth homeostasis is the feedback mechanism. So Earth has its own uh, way to balance the disharmony. So for example, if it is too cool, oxygen dissolves less CO2 from atmosphere, few carbonate minerals are formed, more CO2 builds up in the form and then the greenhouse gas is strengthened. If it is too warm, ocean dissolves more CO2 from atmosphere, more carbonate minerals are formed, and less CO2 is built up in the atmosphere. So less greenhouse gas, Earth is cool. So this is the natural cycle of the Earth. It, it automatically does it. But if it moves, all these feedback mechanism, if it, it goes beyond the threshold, then the systems collapse and we are at the verge where this threshold is at a stake. So, and then there are, there are, so this was the feedback loop in the carbon. Then there are feedback loop in the nature, like how each of the uh, animals are also connected to each other. So if, if there is a increase in say rabbit population that will be consumed by the, the carnivores or, or the, uh, 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 the, the tigers and all those. So this, all these balances are maintained through these feedback loops in the nature. So, so we see all, all, all of us are so connected. Then similarly, we have this positive and negative feedback mechanism. As I said, that if there's a lot of cooling, there's a lot of ice growth, there's increase in albedo. Uh, less uh, solar radiation is absorbed if it is warming, melting of ice, albedo is decreased, more solar radiation is absorbed. And again, this is uh, how the responses are connected with each other. So changes in vegetation, uh, if there is a positive change, there will be more evapotranspiration. More ev evapotranspiration leads to uh, uh, increase in bow and ratio. The, so there is an increase in near sea surface temperature. Precipitation increases. Cloudiness increases. Then if the radiation is more, the vegetation is also uh, like it increases the vegetation, a positive impact of radiation uh, uh, it, it enhances the vegetation growth. So the red are like the negative responses, the green are the positive responses, and the blue are the biophysical feedback to the climate. So positive is the positive feedback loop and negative is the negative feedback loop. So these feedback loops affect the system stability, that is the storage of energy, which is stored in the tree biomass, the flow of energy from one trophic system to another trophic system and the processes which transfer this energy, you know, like the, the photosynthesis or acidogenesis or, or, or rock formation, carbon carbonate formation. So this is how the three spheres, the storage of energy, the flow of energy and the process of transfer of energy, they are in a balanced state. If this balance is disbalanced, then we have the what we are witnessing today. So sustainability means that this, which is slightly tilted, it is not that tilted, it is in a stable state. So that is all what system, sustainability is, that we can have as we can store as much as the energy is available to us. If we store more, then we'll have the imbalances, what we are having what is happening right now. We are storing more energy. Uh, we have stopped the flow of energy, the budget which is allocated to us. Uh, we are using more than what is allocated to us. So we have to have a balance between cons consumption and conservation.
So this is the sustainability, the balance between all these spheres, the interactions, and climate is what keeps the balance okay. So now we come to the next part of the session that is climate change and environmental disaster. So as I said that most of the period in Earth's evolution, the climate has been in a balanced state. So what does that mean? That whatever incoming solar energy is, that much energy is outgoing. And today we have an imbalanced state where the incoming is more and the excess energy is accumulated. 91% is accumulated in oceans, 3% in ice, 5% in land, and 1% in the atmosphere. So this is the amount of excess energy which we are accumulating in our Earth systems. And this we, it has been happening for past, say, 100 to 200 years. So, so from a stable state, the instability started the moment we started accumulating more energy than we should. Uh, can I interrupt? Yeah, can you go to the previous slide? This, this? I didn't understand. You have said 91% ocean, but then in, no. in the stable climate also, it would be the same amount, won't it? It would be, but then it is, uh, it is accumulating. In the stable climate, it is all going back, if you see this. Uh -huh. So it is not accumulated. Okay. We are not keeping that energy. Okay. Now what we are doing, we are keeping that energy. And 91% of form. that is getting stored in the oceans. Oceans, yes. Got it, got it. Thank you. Uh, no, I didn't still get in what form is it stored? In, in form of temperature? Heat. Yeah, heat. In the form of heat. heat. And that is why we are having, we are witnessing all those uh, glaciers, cyclones. Glaciers. cyclones. So, so, because it is accumulated in the ocean, so all uh, all those is manifested as cyclones and hurricanes and uh, the frequency of cyclones and hurricanes have uh, increased uh, over the period of time. Yeah. Uh, okay. But how did it reach ocean? Uh, uh, can you quickly tell the cycle where it, it went and accumulated there? So it is absorbed, you know, as I said, see this figure, if you see, see this. Absorbed by land and oceans. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this absorption, so this absorption, human activities or what? Is this this thing happen due to human? Yeah, this is because of the human activities. We are trapping the energy because, see, as as I said, the energy flow is between the biosphere and geosphere. You know, so it is maintained. But now, what we have done, we have removed the biological. Uh, so we have recut the forest. Okay. We have removed the uh, uh, all those which nature has given and replaced it with human ecosystems. We have the buildings, you know. So I'll just give you an example. Uh, you might be witnessing this, what we call as urban heat islands these days. Now, why it is happening that those urban heat islands? These urban heat islands are happening because uh, when vegetation is there, vegetation reflects the infrared radiation. Vegetation reflects highest in the infrared radiation. It does mm -hmm. not reflect in the green wavelength. It reflects highest in the infrared ra radiation. And because this infrared radiation goes back to the uh, space, that heat is not generated. Uh -huh. so what is happening uh, now, it is being replaced by the concrete jungle. This concrete jungle, it absorbs that infrared radiation and then re emit as heat. So vegetation, why, why uh, uh, you must have seen, you know, like if there's a bare surface and there's a vegetation, there will be a difference in temperature. Mm. And the difference in, in temperature is because vegetation reflects the infrared radiation back to the space. So you have a cooling impact. Whereas the bare surface, it absorbs that infrared radiation and then it re emit as heat. Okay. So the surface automatically gets increase the surface temperature automatically gets increased hmm. okay and also the greenhouse gases would have some problem and they will 
not let the energy go out also so so what what happens is uh, so uh, we are like blanketed by this uh, <clears throat> greenhouse gases it's a natural phenomena you know they act like a a, a a layer and out of this layer there are few windows mm mm through which those uh, long wave radiations escapes you know mm. so the infrared radiation if it is there it goes out through those windows mm. okay but if that infrared radiation radiation is trapped as heat mm -hmm. it, if it is converted into heat you know so mm. it is absorbed and then it, when it is reemitted as heat now this heat those greenhouse gas will not allow to pass uh -huh. okay okay yes so greenhouse gas they allow to pass infrared infrared but they will not allow to pass the heat mm. Mm. because because that is the phenomena no that that yeah. earth has produced for us mm. to maintain that 15 degrees uh, ambient temperature to wo heat ko nahi jaane denge lekin hum kya kar rahe hain what we are doing is ki jo infrared ki tarah jana chahiye tha us infrared ko humne convert kar diya heat mein उस इंफ्रारेड को हमने एब्जॉर्ब कर लिया और उस एब्जॉर्ब करके उसको रीएमिट कर दिया हमने हीट में तो फिर तो तो वो हीट अब अब हमको एक्सेसिव हीट हैज कम इन नाउ हां एक्सेसिव हीट हैज कम इन नाउ वाओ सो एंड देन दिस इज अ पिक्चर आई विल आई एम आई एम रियली वांटिंग टू मेक पीपल अंडरस्टैंड दैट वी all 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 the organisms including humans we have a budget so earth systems what they do is they generate uh regenerate of whatever so we are all consumers as i said we only produce waste hmm. we are also waste and we produce waste <laughs> <laughs> but earth systems are so beautiful that they convert this waste into useful usable systems and services uh, okay hmm. now if you see it is from 1971 to 2022 so every year whatever resources we consume earth can regenerate it okay hmm. but what is happening is we are consuming more resources than earth can regenerate so that's why we are having an overshoot so this overshoot is because of our lifestyles yeah even so in our life say 1.75 earths will will be needed to re regenerate whatever we have produced to ha to abhi jo hamara consumption hai overall pura we will need uh, almost two earths ha, all all so so different continents have different uh, uh, consumption uh, usa has the highest consumption uh, they are consuming five earths Uh, india wow. ha they are consuming five earths so so if we, if we aspire for a us lifestyle then we are actually distressing our planet uh, i i would say we we should go back to our vedic lifestyle <laughs> the yogic lifestyle yeah uh, and uh, get back to what we say is one earth lifestyle so our yogic lifestyle or vedic lifestyle is very much attuned to the earth systems earth and uh, we will only consume as much as it is the earth yeah. can regenerate so if you see that this is the debt up mm. you might be understanding yes. that uh, we have we, we we are not surplus we are mm. in debt yeah and this is the debt we are passing on to our next generation so our lifestyle choices whatever choices we make today is going to impact our future generations so we have to cut down on our consumption so our lifestyle and i'll share you what a one earth lifestyle is uh, in the later slides also mm -hmm. so as i said that this is measured as ecological footprint so we have to move beyond from from the carbon footprint so what is our ecological footprint so it is like it is the measure of how fast we consume resources and generate waste compared to how fast nature can absorb our waste and generate new resources 
so what are the resources we get we get energy we get housing timber and paper food and fiber seafood so these are the our consumption we are these are the resources which we are consuming and how is nature nature is the only thing which regenerates is the forest the built up land it doesn't regenerate much the cropland and pasture to an extent they do means if we again go back to our vedic systems the vedic way of farming and all that maybe we can but uh, the the current uh, uh, crop intensification which is intensified to produce maximum from what the you know the soil or the land can give us you know that's 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 again you know it's it's a part of that consumerist uh, society society consumerist economy you know so so how how we say that we are an economic superpower we are an econ economics if we consume more we are we are an economic superpower but this goes against the economics of the earth system earth system and this is what we have to understand ke uh, our economics should not be the consumption based economics but it should be the regeneration based economics that how regenerative as an ecosystems we are so and this is the status of the world that who are the creditors bio capacity creditors means they have more uh, systems and resources like earth can regenerate more than they can consume and the debtors are where the footprint is more than how the earth systems are regenerating so we are also debtors hum log bhi jo hai ghate mein hai hum log sab karza lenge apne prithvi se we are we are living on the debt runam krutva grutam pibet <laughs> so that's that's the situation right now so so as i said that this earth energy budget uh, as i have explained it so what are the drivers of the change so the oceans the soils the above ground mass the below ground mass the soils human health biodiversity conservation safety and security measures our emissions our land management and urbanization so urbanization is also a huge contributor to the state where we are currently into and as i said that the more imbalance the more deforestation degradation more fires more changes in the biomass biodiversity is reducing in the geosphere we are witnessing lot of earthquake volcanic activities landslides in the cryosphere the sea ice extents is reducing the permafrost is reducing and the glacier and ice cap dynamics are also constantly you know shuffling so we as i've been to the gangotri glaciers and i've uh, monitored and mapped gangotri glacier over the years of last 50 years and it has drastically reduced wow last 50 years of snow cover and the glaciers so and the in the hydrosphere we are uh, having lot of ocean currents and lot of uh, hurricanes and cyclones uh, the recurrence the occurrence is much flooding events are also this year we witnessed lot of flooding events every year not this year every year in one part of the other we are witnessing the extreme flood events so the changes in the solar in, in, uh, inputs impacts the atmosphere ice interaction heat exchange wind stress precipitation and ev uh, evaporation and it also changes in atmosphere the composition and circulation it changes in the hydrological cycle the soil biosphere interactions the land so so all these are so deeply interconnected that any change in one is going to impact the change in the other so we have this eroding landscape a uh, lot of 
erosivity of climate, velocity of runoff and wind is increased, stratification and sedimentation is increased, decomposition and stratification is also impacted. Uh, the nitrogen transformation is also impacted. So there's denitrification and nitrification. And there are a lot of N2 emissions, a lot of uh, methane emissions, a lot of decomposition and CO2 emissions. So the landscape which is eroding, it is also adding to the greenhouse gases. Mm. So we have to... So you mean to say that uh, we are increasing the heat emission and at the same time we are also increasing the uh, greenhouse gases also. So uh, yes, it is a double whammy in a way. Yeah, because because that that increase in uh, heat, then uh, whatever uh, we have done, you know, to uh, so as I said, that increase in heat results in CO two uh, eroding the landscape, weathering is increased. So all this uh, is there, and all our activities is also eroding the landscape. No, there were a lot of forests, you know. Hmm. So we have removed the forest. Now that soil which was uh, binded together by forest, you know, it is taken as a runoff. Hmm. So the topsoil is all gone. The topsoil is gone, so the fertility of the soil is also gone. So it's it's also connected. Yeah. Wow. So natural resources like biodiversity, soil, water resources, they provide us the energy, food security, uh, productive economy, and but over exploitation and invasive species are what we have created a havoc on this planet. As I said, the species of Israel, we are bringing it to India, which is not the right thing. Even the species of one region in India cannot be taken to another region in India because that stabilization has happened uh, uh, due to the climatic factors or to the soil factors. So there's a biogeographical distinction. Uh, there's there's uh, biogeographical variations between different species, uh, different composition uh, of species. So, uh, so this is how the human emission of greenhouse gases is leading to initial changes to the climate system, as I said. The melting of the ice, then increased absorption of the incoming sunlight and additional warming, increased evaporation of water surface from the earth's surface, more water. So again, water vapor is also a greenhouse gas, so additional warming. Mm. So this is like, you know, cascading effect. Mm. Mm. And as I said, increase in temperature, ice loss would be there, permafrost would be lost, subsidence would be there. So there would be coastal erosion. Due to sea level rise also, there would be coastal erosion. Uh, then precipitation changes. There are changes in the land surface. There's high flooding events. So all these, like, you know, increase in temperature, there are a lot of wildfires, there are a lot of storm events. So eventually, it is it is like a connected so you trigger one thing and the other things are also triggered yeah butterfly effect so so as i said there's a change in radiative force uh, forcing your temperature which is a physical reference system that is impacted there's a change in albedo there's a change in ice cover uh, what is albedo uh, so albedo is basically the reflectance, the percentage reflectance, whatever is reflected from the earth surface to the exosphere is called albedo. And it is changing. So, so again, as I said, the climate sensitivity, the moment, uh, so this is the forcings and the feedbacks. So this is on, on the... Right hand side, this, the forcings are like you know the industrial changes, the volcanic eruptions, uh, the vehicle uh, explosions, nuclear explosions, the farming. Now, this biospheric components, uh, if are on the forcing side, 
the sensitivity to the climate change is 3 degree centigrade okay mm. and here the feedbacks are feedbacks are being ma managed mm. and maintained by the so the feedbacks are being managed and maintained by natural systems <laughs> Uh, yeah, the natural systems, then the climate sensitivity would be for a three degree centigrade. Mm. So, heat mm. uptake, you know, it can uh, regulate, regulate uh, negative feedback, yeah, positive yeah. feedback, which had shown earlier. Uh, positive feedback is there. And uh, if the feedbacks, like if we in, uh, include in the feedback the natural systems also, then the climate sensitivity, it is like four to six degree temperature. Hmm. So, what are the effects of climate change? Economic losses because more and worse drought, more heat related illnesses, more and worse storms, more animal extinctions, more and worse forest fires, rising sea levels. Last five years have been recorded as hottest climate rate of sea rise it is also tripled from 1901 to 1971 and it has increased 1.09 acidification so ocean warmth and acid acidification it is now irreversible you know because oh, wow. that, yeah so that warming is due to this acidification so an increase in sea rise it threatens a lot of people because see we we have changed drastically into the ocean systems and that is three-fourths of our earth's surface. Mm, mm. And then there's a lot of scarcity in glaciers and decrease in Arctic side. So these are the infographics. There's a 34% increase in sea level, 62% increase in pollution. This much amount of vegetation has been lost. 69% of solar radiation, it is being bound to and then the genetic diversity and 47% of the glaciers, they are melting. Wow. So, right now, the graphics are like 820 million people are undernourished to drought more than 2 million people they would be displaced by weather and climate related disaster more than 35 million people would be affected by floods as I said ocean acidification is ongoing and irreversible the peatland ecosystems you know which are very important in terms of uh, regulating uh, the ecological balance, they are also threatened by these because they are very diverse ecosystems. You know, they are the decomposers. We can say that peatland ecosystems are the decomposer ecosystems. Mm -hmm. And more than 1600 deaths are associated with heat waves and wildfires. Mm -hmm. And more than 8,83,000 internal displacement are due to floods and droughts. So, climate change, it impacts on other systems and infrastructure, impact on energy production and use. <clears throat> so, we have to have a holistic approach when we talk about our earth system and climate change. And that is why I said that yoga, through reviving yoga, <clears throat> we can best reconnect with our nature with our ecology so as i said that a small shift it will make a big difference so just a shift in the previous climate and the new climate more hot weather extreme hot weather and we have a lot of extreme weather and climate events so we have severe droughts we have extreme precipitation events we have coastal flooding we have heat waves so if, <clears throat> I don't know if you have witnessed, winters are getting more cold, 
summers are getting more warm rainy seasons are getting more rains and <clears throat> droughts are getting more dry so that is what is the result of our instability the the climate change is basically the unstable state of our planet and this is how the change have happened and if we see from 1980 to 2012 the increase in all the events the geophysical meteorological hydrological and climatological events it is increasing year on year and not just like one event all the events are increasing so so how each is interrelated yeah so what are the steps for ecological rehabilitation and regeneration so we have to take actions which reduce emissions and also action to manage the risk of the impact so water conservation new energy systems local food uh, mass awareness and education and complete communities so we have to have self sustaining communities you know and even in the urban areas we'll have to have the uh, biodiversity and forest so i'll just give you an example all the urban centers today mm -hmm. are the consumers mm. none of the cities produce anything for the economy we are only consuming economy yet we are the growth engines of the economic so contradictory so contradictory and the producers are all the villages the rural areas but they are neglected <clears throat> neglected they are suffering so so we we <laughs> right now there's lot of emphasis which is being put on that we put a value we put a economic value to the biodiversity to the nature so that we understand you know the gravity of our actions you know how much we are losing when we are losing that biodiversity you know how much economic losses in terms of money we are losing when we are losing that biodiversity or that ecosystem service mm. so so this is a new phenomena mm. uh, it's nothing we'll be like you know tons सीधा नहीं पकड़ के उल्टा पकड़ेंगे धरती से जो लिया है वापस उसको वापस देंगे इन टर्म्स ऑफ से ईएसजी इन टर्म्स ऑफ रीजेनरेशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ रिस्टोरेशन बट वी हैव टू गिव बैक या सीधा सीधा बात करेंगे तो नहीं सुनेंगे तो फैंसी नेम्स यूज करना है सीधा बात ये है कि हमने कर्जा लिया है वी हैव टेकन मोर देन टू टाइम्स पर हम को अपना सर्वाइवल देखना है तो yeah. नहीं देखना है तो ठीक है कोई बात नहीं पहले भी डायनासोर आए थे डायनासोर चले गए थे हम भी आए हैं हम भी चले जाएंगे तो वी हैव टू गो फॉर फॉरेस्ट प्रोटेक्शन वी हैव टू डू लैंड यूज चेंजेस वी हैव टू रीलोकेट द लैंड यूज यू नो एंड इन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड बिल्डिंग डिजाइन वी हैव टू गो फॉर local architecture we have to go for local materials you know and 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 more suitable materials i i remember you know 50 like 30 years before uh, in my villages we never had i come from rajasthan yet and we used to go to village in summer vacations but there was no requirement of fan even fans at that point of time mm. it was a hot climate but the construction of the houses was so that we didn't need mm. yes fans to yes. you know uh, run run in that household so so it was it was so simple lifestyle and now day by day we are you know imposing ourselves <clears throat> with a lifestyle which is not even healthy see now 
people are talking the bad impacts of uh, sleeping in an air conditioning environment it is not healthy because you are creating an artificial environment we are part of nature we are born in this nature we will thrive with nature we will thrive staying with nature we will not thrive staying away from nature so uh, as i said that we have so, to uh, dr yogita there is a tough uh, job a moderator has to do uh, that is to remind uh, yes, the yes, time yes, 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 you know yes, yes, though yes, it is very interesting i really hate to do this but uh, we mm. have like 10 more minutes Okay, we, okay. We so, sure will be having so many more questions. So I request yes, you to yes. uh, conclude quickly and have some yes. time for questions. Okay, Thank no you. worries. So now we have to go move from the conventional sustainability to regenerative and restorative terminologies. You know, sustainability is now an outdated thing because we have far gone beyond our thresholds. So we have to talk about, about the holistic, the thriving whole living systems the inner and outer integration as what we talk in the yoga the inner and outer integration the co creation manifesting potential and essence and transformational development change process so this is what uh, we have to now look forward to so uh, so the technical the conventional was degenerating it was uh, you know uh, it was like more energy required at a greater cost and uh, th that is why we are in a debt and from more energy we have to move towards a less energy required which is a living system design so from a technical system design we have to move towards a living system design from a human made and still we are in the technical system design also because the, the kind of uh, impetus is given on ai ml deep learning and these new technological uh, things which is coming up virtual reality augmented reality you know this is not right as per the earth systems consider so we have to go from a technical system design to a living system design which is qualitative living in whole and effective and <clears throat> as i said it is understanding the whole systems the technologies and techniques are segmented so it is degenerating it is we say that one step better than breaking the law kind of a thing but uh, we 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 have to participate as nature we are a part of nature we are not separated from nature we have to co evolve as a whole system so this is what and this is what the regenerative food system is uh, we have to get back to the life principles and the traditional ecological uh, knowledge the food system sustainability we have to talk about regenerative uh, agriculture so what is that so it is like uh, <clears throat> when they started this grazing you know so uh, this is where you provide equitable access to benefits to everybody so this is what the regenerative agriculture is this is what the regenerative ecosystem is where we have a, a good amount of carbon sequestration the nutrient and soil retention is also uh, done properly the, all the climatic parameters are maintained and regulated on an ongoing basis the nutrient cycle is also monitored the biodiversity of the soil of the farm <clears throat> of the forest is maintained uh, you regulate the flood through proper channels proper water harvesting uh, methods and you also <clears throat> improve the land access uh, and, and the transfer from one generation to another generation so and the, so the, these are again the benefits from the regenerative ranching so these are the experiments which are being done across the globe where we are talking about regenerating the ecosystems so the social dynamics is that uh, increased productivity reduced imports and expenses 
uh, nutrient dense products are there uh, the gut health uh, is in improved which improves the overall uh, biological health of our well being uh, few veterinary expenses financial well being sense of community sense of right livelihood and we are paying back for the ecosystem services which are being rendered to us then <clears throat> the carbon sinks are increased there is reduced fossil fuel and biogenic em emissions and the ecosystem it benefits to increase soil and water holding capacity increase resilience to droughts and floods increase plant biodiversity improved wildlife habitat and elimination of chemicals so a ranching principle uh, what do you actually mean by ranching so ranching is Uh, basically where you allow the uh, uh, you know uh, kind of uh, right. guided uh, grazing uh, in, in that particular area so again the regenerative uh, agriculture integration of crops trees with livestock you manage grazing agroforestry lay farming fodder trees silver pasture live fences and so this we have to do both at the macro scale and at the micro, micro scale <laughs> so natural systems we have to use uh, a uh, lot of organic components uh, the biodiversity enrichment it has to happen based on the floristic composition of that particular eco region so then so there's whole lot of divisions you know like all, all the geography so there are biogeographical regions so based on the biogeographical regions what species uh, were formed as a climax community as a part of uh, ecological succession we have to identify that and regenerate using those uh, species and the infrastructure built up also it needs to be done so that it absorbs the shocks which the climate is putting on to us and so i say we only have one planet to sustain and we all have to have a lifestyle that uses as much resources that our planet can regenerate in one year so this is a one life one earth lifestyle which i have been living for last say whatever years i i understand so so in terms of food it is like 85% plant based diet and 15% dairy more than 50% of your food should be fresh food more than 50% it should be sourced in less than 300 kilometers uh a dwelling can be in a multi story apartment four person sharing 76 square meters energy efficient uh, using renewable source no air conditioning passive heating and passive cooling new clothes only after old are worn out mm -hmm. new appliances only when old are beyond repair 70% of paper and plastic recycling uh travel by car only 7800 km per year by train or bus 1560 km per year and 4 hours of travel in a year by air so so actually this is based on the lifestyle which i was i've been having it last three they years are all based on calculations uh, of yeah, uh, on your calculation. one year yeah, yeah. that earth can regenerate in one yeah, year that earth can. so there is this ecological footprint calculator i'll share the link with all of you so you Shit. can also do your uh, footprint calculations and then yeah. you know as per your requirement so like this is based on my requirement of how much travel i want to do by car or by train or bus or by so if you you can reduce the air travel to zero and maybe you know you can increase your travel by car or by bus yeah. so this is what is one earth lifestyle is i have also not been able to maintain it in the last 3 years because of the work pressures but i am 
wanting to get back to it because I feel it's not dharma. You really have painted a very scary picture. <laughs> Which is actually the reality which we have been uh, yeah, so, refusing to see. Yes. The more people see this kind of uh, details, more awareness comes, and we need exactly. to, ex you know, we need to spread this word among everybody. It is very, very yeah. important. So, so that is most important, and then uh, you can uh, only spread it when you yourself practice it, because. Uh, People will not take it if you are not practicing it. 